So, so let's talk a little bit about this. How do we reflect on family and healing during the Advent? And, um, you know, what kind of graces are orienta- oriented towards this generational healing? Mm-hmm. Um, we're hearing a lot about that. Um, all this, since we have so many exorcists and um, mm-hmm. deliverance ministry people and people in healing like the um, JP2 Healing Institute, Bob mm-hmm. Shoes, all of this, we're hearing a lot about this, this idea of generational sin, which mm-hmm. some of us maybe had never come into. Mm -hmm. Um, or this idea of entering into this inner healing. I think, I don't know anybody who doesn't need some sort of inner healing. So how can Advent and the beautiful reflections on the Holy Family help us Mm -hmm. to enter Mm -hmm. into that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we think of Advent as literally the beginning of a new year. It's the beginning of a new liturgical year. And There's so many graces the Lord gives us. He's going to give you and I graces this Advent that he didn't give us last Advent. And it's going to be for a time such as this. And when we talk, I work a lot with Dr. Bob Schutz and at, with the John Paul II Healing Center. And when and when we speak about healing, we're not talking about fixing. We're not talking about some movement in the church. We're not talking about some you know people over there who need this and I don't need it. When we talk about healing, it's a very simple definition of healing. And it's this, an experience or an encounter with God's love that brings us into wholeness and communion an experience or an encounter with God's love that brings us into wholeness and communion. And, Mm -hmm. and that is discipleship. That's, that's holiness. That's our whole life. And Jesus loves us so much. I am just continually amazed at the beauty of Christ of he wants to be so intimate with us. He's going to take every experience we've ever had onto himself. And he's going to share every one of his experiences with us if we allow him to. And so that means that everything that's happened in our life, we're not alone in it. We're not alone in it. And we just think of the mystery of our families. And it was a very common saying in healing circles that suffering that is not transformed is transmitted. And so all of us in Mm -hmm. our life, the places where we have yet to have our suffering transformed, when we all have suffering, every single person, no matter what walk of life you are, no matter how many academic degrees or how politically important you are, every person has places where their hearts have been ruptured in love and where love is withheld or love was withdrawn. And the Lord is desiring to bring those places into wholeness and communion because those places don't just go away. We actually Mm -hmm. just transmit them on to others, whether that's overtly or covertly. And so the Lord is bringing us into his own beautiful life. That's the very first paragraph of the catechism that the Lord creates us to bring us into his own blessed life. And that's, it's just our simple faith and it's gorgeous. You know, I I love what you say, how you say what you say, the, the, uh, it, Healing is to is if I could put I'm wrestling with words a little bit, but I'm thinking I'm thinking there's a lot of images going on in my head. Mm -hmm. So we're a Carmelite community, the Mm -hmm. Apostle VA community, which is behind spiritualdirection.com, the Avalon Institute, all of that. We're Carmelite, and in that uh, spirituality, what we are often working with with people is what is in the way of your ascent to union, right? Which is in Mm -hmm. in the definition. And what we've come to, just like uh, you and, and Dr. Bob Schutz, and, and I think it's a, it's a movement of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. in the church today, mm-hmm. is that when we encounter that brokenness in us, it's not a time to run. Mm-hmm. It's not a time to, I don't know, hide or recoil or, or mask or whatever. But it's an invitation of God because... It, it's either in his in his in the will that he's allowed, of course, something to occur, mm-hmm. or or he causes it to occur for our greater benefit. But when we enter into those times when that junk comes up, mm-hmm. it's an invitation to healing. It's actually mm-hmm. God entering into our life, if you will, or making known more fully mm-hmm. his presence and saying, This stuff is in the way of of the great love that I have for you. Mm-hmm. Would you please let me, you know, kill it? And I and I'm now I'm mixing with uh, C.S. Lewis's great. Yes, divorce. I love a great divorce. That's so great, I love that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scene is so amazing. Where the yeah. where it's almost the angel is desperate. Like so, he's an instrument of God to heal the man. He has a yeah. demon, right? That the, the yeah. junk, whatever he represents, and this demon is desperate for the man to say yes. 
And then the second he says yes, of course he he heals him and he becomes this. You mean the angel is desperate for him to say? Did yes. I say it wrong? You said the demon is. Desperate oh, sorry. For him. No, the no. demon would like him to say no. Demon's right. trying to get him to cling on. Yeah, right. it's so right. good. Right. And hold on, hold right. on. You know, you're not going to like to be without me. So. It's a good thing you're here. We've yeah. had all kinds of <laughs> correcting me, but I think that's is that the way you see healing? Is is it's an, it is the junk is there, and God, you know, gave Himself for us. And he didn't just give himself for us so that we could get to have this life of nothing but difficulty and then heaven, right? Or the or purgatory. But actually in this life, he wants to draw us deeper into his heart. Mm-hmm. And he's inviting us through the healing of our wounds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Dan, I think our wounds, um, we are, every single one of us have, we have places of our wounds that we're very ashamed of. And we're, we're convinced they make us unlovable. And so even when we talk about like the junk that, like the junk that gets in the way, a lot of times those are areas of, of lies we believe about ourselves. It's unconfessed sin. It's suffering that is stuck so deep in our heart where we just keep living it out over and over and over and over again. And, and all of us try really hard. We all try really hard to, to be normal. We try to go on, we try to muster up the courage to forgive that person in our family and, and inside our hearts are just shattered. And, those sacred places of encounter with the Lord are so precious to him. Jesus is not, he's not ashamed of our wounds. He's not ashamed of us. He's not ashamed of our weaknesses. We're terrified of them because we think it makes us unlovable. But when we find it in those places of poverty, where we sit with Mary at the foot of the cross and we just say, I can't, I need you. I can't do this. Like I need your help. Those are such sacred places of encounter. And I think all of us in our life, if we could just step back a bit, like if you could look at the areas of your deepest suffering and areas that you're coming through, not we're getting over or dealing with, but they're we're walking through with Jesus in this Paschal mystery. Aren't those the very places where our hearts have been broken open to love like Jesus? Like how else would we, how else would we fathom his love for us and to be able to love others if our hearts had not been broken open so deeply in these places that are so precious and so tender. And so I, I wrote in the book Restore that many years ago, I was at a giving a healing retreat for seminarians and the rector of the seminary is an exorcist. And he was sharing with me, he was in all, he was in all the teachings. And at one point we were having lunch together and he just shared with me and he said, I really believe, he said, I really believe Satan is like a sniper. And he said, because he has a superior intellect to us, he can intuit the destiny of every human person. He said, he doesn't know the details, mm-hmm. but he said, I really believe that he can intuit the destiny and he will shoot his most deadly, deadly bullet, most poisonous arrow in the places to do us the most damage. Mm-hmm. And he said, your wounds are not random. Your wounds are not arbitrary. An enemy has done this. And he said, if Satan can get us to hate ourselves, hate God and hate the people who wounded us, he's won. But he said, if we allow in the grief, in the lamentation, in this truth, in the, the valley of the shadow of death, if we allow Jesus to come with us in those places and to transform them, we love with a power and a potency and an efficacy and a compassion that we would have never known any other way, yeah. which is why we can say not just a nice pious idea, but we can say in our life, your life and my life, oh, happy fault, you know, oh, necessary sin of Adam that gained for us so glorious a redeemer like this, this is our faith. It's so gorgeous. Like Jesus is so good to us. He's so kind. It's just stunning how he loves us. He calls us friends, you know, my yeah, gosh. It's, it's it's really beautiful. One of the ways that, um, that I've been moved to speak about this is that, you know, hurt people hurt others. Yes. Healed people heal others. Yes. Yeah. And, and what I have come to believe with everything, because I've just seen it played over and over through direction through um, the women that I walk with through deliverance and in and, and many ways is that the enemy, as you were saying, he's like a sniper. He, he, mm-hmm. he picks his spot and he, where he can create the most damage. But I also believe that that is the area that our greatest call is. Yes, that's true. That's yep. our greatest call. And, yes. you know, for me, when I was a child and my dad is long gone, God rest his soul and have mercy on him. Um, you know, I, I heard over and over again, children are to be seen and not heard. Mm. My voice, mm. my speaking was not acceptable. Mm. I was to be silent. I was not to be seen. Mm. And I would have never told you that I would be leading marriage retreats with my husband, that I would be on radio 
um, yeah. doing Divine Intimacy Radio that I would be speaking in front of women and conferences. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, isn't this fascinating? That And it's so beautiful. And so I, when I hear someone who's hurting and we're walking through with them and we bring them to healing, it's, it's easy to impart great encouragement and hope yes. to say, the Lord is still healing his people. Mm -hmm. He's still healing it. I see it all the time. We do. You do. I, we see it at all these conferences and, and these private retreats and everything. And mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing to see the Lord at work mm -hmm. and know that he's bringing about a greater thing, a greater good mm -hmm. that he's going to use to set others free as well. 